If your scalloped potatoes are lacking the right amount of spice or creaminess, or if you just need more veggies in your diet, then it's time to try these game-changing upgrades. Tomatoes and cheese are basically synonymous with Italian cuisine, and these staple ingredients don't just taste great on bread and noodles. They can also lend scalloped potatoes an Italian flair that adds life to any meal. To make this dish, layered scalloped potatoes, canned tomatoes, and mozzarella cheese in a baking dish. Feel free to add in other compatible ingredients like ricotta cheese, fresh spinach, and olives. Flavoring this mix is a cinch if you start with canned tomatoes that already come with Italian seasoning. Bake it all at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes, and be generous with additional sprinkles of seasonings like basil, garlic, oregano, and a dash of white pepper. Homemade scalloped potato recipes are known for their ooey-gooey cheesiness, but you can go even further. Just take a flavorful hint from south of the border and get ready to whip up some Mexican scalloped potatoes. It all starts with a can of nacho cheese soup from the pantry along with your slow cooker. Slice your potatoes and add in the nacho cheese soup. Allow them to bubble and simmer in the cheese sauce for four or five hours. When it comes time to serve, freshly grated pepper jack cheese can add even more spice to the dish. If you're afraid that this will result in a tongue searing you won't soon forget, add a dollop of sour cream or plain yogurt to cool down the fire a bit. Yo! <laughs> Canned ham and peas can turn classic scalloped potatoes into a delicious casserole. The juices from the ham add a smokiness to the abundant cheeses, while the peas add extra flavor as well as a decent amount of calcium and magnesium. Be forewarned, though, that some casseroles can get soggy if they're not prepared properly. You have a couple of options for preventing this. If you start this recipe with boxed scalloped potatoes, adjust the amount of liquid that the instructions suggest if you plan on adding the canned peas without draining them. Be aware that substituting frozen peas for canned peas also carries the same risk of sogginess, because as the ice crystals on the peas melt during the cooking process, they release water. On a related note, canned ham has plenty of brine and jelly. Rinsing the ham before putting it into the casserole can prevent everything from getting too salty. Some canned ham brands have as much as 620 milligrams per serving. This can be a problem, since some boxed scalloped potatoes also contain a good deal of salt. To mitigate this, you can drain and wash the ham. Ham. Mushroom soup, along with a generous helping of canned mushrooms, can really take scalloped potatoes to new heights by adding some smoky flavor and creaminess, as well as a bit of substance. It's a particularly great choice for anyone who's chosen to go vegan. But if you miss the taste of meat, then the Baby Bella variety of mushrooms can replicate the texture of chicken. Or you could opt for chanterelles to achieve the consistency of crab for a sea-inspired dish. Meanwhile, the canned mushroom soup itself enhances the overall creaminess of scalloped potatoes. It becomes particularly creamy when the recipe calls for cream cheese instead of, or in addition to, cheddar and other types of cheeses. The creaminess factor gets cranked up even higher still when you make scalloped potatoes with russet or Yukon gold potatoes as the potato starch makes the milk base in the mushroom soup all the thicker. Not everyone is a fan of noodles, so making scalloped potatoes with tuna instead can serve as a clever alternative to a standard tuna casserole. You can also add a can of cream of celery soup to enhance the creaminess and augment the tuna's flavor thanks to the natural salts in the celery. Throw in some bits of onion, a dash of garlic, and a little white pepper to give it a more savory kick. Frozen peas and carrots or broccoli stretch the recipe, upgrading it from side dish to main course. And if you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, look for brands like Hungry Jack, Betty Crocker, or Simply Potatoes, which carry the gluten-free label. The combination of ground beef and potatoes has been tested countless times in plenty of common dishes like shepherd's pie. If your taste buds already savor this pairing, then you may very well be ready to fall in love with a combination of scalloped potatoes and hamburger meat. I would like to buy a hamburger. Warmed potatoes drink in the liquids that they're bubbling in. In this case, they'll be infused with the essence of canned ground beef's flavor and juices, as well as any herbs and spices you might add. This is basically like a hamburger helper dish, but with potatoes instead of noodles. If you want to ensure that you'll leave the table good and full, substituting scalloped potatoes for pasta fits the bill nicely. Just add that canned ground beef and you're good to go. While turkey is usually the star of many holiday dinners, a few side dishes are stars in their own rights, including green bean casserole. This creamy and savory dish combines canned green beans, 
cream of mushroom soup and tasty French onions. Adventurous foodies can mash up multiple holiday staples by adding scalloped potatoes to this casserole. It all makes for quite the hearty tapestry. Usually, green bean casserole is one of the creamiest dishes on the table, and a few culinary tricks can make it even creamier. Ingredients such as mayonnaise, sour cream, or heavy cream thicken up the mushroom soup. Finally, grated cheeses like cheddar or parmesan sprinkled on top of the casserole and mixed throughout before you add the French onions can really make this one of you and your family's new favorite comfort foods. On a cold winter night, canned potato soup warms the tummy quickly and easily with very little prep required. And there's a simple hack to crank up the flavor factor. Boxed scalloped potatoes. Most of the time, boxed scalloped potatoes take about 25 minutes to cook, so you don't have to worry about testing your patience. To make this combo work, cook the potatoes according to the package directions. While you wait, prep any additional ingredients like diced ham, green onions, and grated cheese. Once the scalloped potatoes are done, take them from the oven and transfer them to a large pot on the stove, and then add the potato soup. Because the scalloped potatoes and the additional ingredients add volume to the soup, use a larger pot than usual. Allow everything to simmer for a bit. The starch from the scalloped potatoes will increase the creaminess and volume, while also infusing some cheese flavoring. Garnish with grated cheese, green onions, and diced ham or bacon bits, and you're good to go. Germans have been eating sauerkraut since at least the 1600s, and immigrants brought it to American shores beginning in the 1700s. So you can go ahead and Germanize your scalloped potatoes by adding canned sauerkraut. It will lend a tangy sourness to create the kind of flavor contrast that's common in German cooking. Anybody order fried sauerkraut? You can make the recipe from scratch, but if time is short, you can go ahead and cheat a little by combining the sauerkraut with boxed scalloped potatoes. To avoid making the dish watery, drain the sauerkraut and squeeze it dry. One simple way to do this is to put a cheesecloth in a strainer and then dump the sauerkraut into the cheesecloth. Fold the cheesecloth over the sauerkraut and squeeze the liquid out over the sink. Once you're ready to cook, layer the ingredients. Potatoes go on the bottom, topped with the sauerkraut and cheese. Top with some extra grated cheese for more flavor, and then cover with foil and bake. Anyone who's ever had the pleasure of partaking in a baked potato bar knows just how delicious the whole experience can be. Seriously, there's no denying the culinary wonder of a spud with a generous ladle of chili topped with grated cheese and garnished with green onions. And replicating this experience at home doesn't require an entire kitchen renovation. All you need are some boxed scalloped potatoes, a can of chili, and some grated cheese. Then you'll end up with a thick and filling casserole that will surely have you running back for second helpings. To make this casserole hearty enough, consider utilizing a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratio of potatoes to canned chili. Most boxed scalloped potatoes come with plenty of cheese sauce, but sprinkling grated cheddar and romano or parmesan on top can really take the cheesiness to the next level. It's also worth mentioning that adding chili and cheese to the recipe may alter the liquid ratios, so consider altering the amount of liquid that the directions on the box call for if you opt for two boxes of potatoes instead of three. Canned white beans and butter beans are very adaptable from a taste standpoint. That's important to know if you like adding them to different recipes to give them more fiber and protein. These beans also deliver some of the benefits of the Blue Zone diet. For those who are unfamiliar, Blue Zones are the places on Earth where people live the longest. Beans play a critical role in these mostly plant-based food cultures, and an abundance of them at that. We're talking at least a cup a day. I love beans. Big, fat, hot, juicy beans. Scalloped potato recipes benefit hugely from such an upgrade because canned beans take on the flavors of the potatoes while also sneaking more plant-based food into the diet. Plus, savory vegetables like onions and mushrooms and seasonings like garlic give the dish more flavor, as well as even more plant-based power. And while some Blue Zoners eat cheese, many don't. If you'd like to go the dairy-free route when adding white beans to scalloped potatoes, then consider making it with a vegan cheese sauce instead. Corned beef accidentally became a big deal when Irish immigrants couldn't afford the bacon that they would have boiled and eaten with cabbage on St. Patrick's Day. Enter the substitute beef brisket, an idea that the Irish got from their Jewish neighbors once they moved to the United States. Eventually, the boiling of the meat also went away in place of salt curing. And corned beef wasn't limited to just cabbage, but all sorts of dishes, including the breakfast staple corned beef hash. As corned beef's history makes clear, the recipe is ever-evolving. If you look at it that way, what could be more perfect than adding canned corned beef to a slow cooker full of scalloped potatoes? To make it work, rinse the corned beef before cooking to get rid of the extra salt that may make the dish too briny. 
The advantage to making it in the slow cooker is that you can set it to cook before bed and then eat it for breakfast, or cook it all day and have dinner waiting for you when you get home. If you've ever topped your mashed potatoes with canned cream corn instead of gravy, then you know just how tasty this alternative combo is. The mashed spuds are a savory counterpoint to the corn's sweetness, and the creaminess of the corn replicates the consistency of gravy nicely. Essentially, it adds even more creaminess to an already creamy dish. The only way it could be improved upon further is if you add scalloped potatoes instead, thereby resulting in something else that's also sweet, savory, and very cheesy. This upgrade works with both scalloped potatoes made from scratch or a box version. The recipe usually calls for milk or water, which ups the cream factor. The liquid from the canned cream corn and the milk is enough to reconstitute the dried potatoes in the scalloped potatoes. However, you may want to experiment with reducing some of the liquid if you find that the mix gets too soupy for your taste. To top it all off, bits of diced ham or bacon can really take this dish to the next level.